for two terms, and I'll work my tail off for every Republican that come across, that come, that come out and ran. I did all I could do. I were, even John McCain and Mitt Romney. I'm a, I have a publicly apologized for all the work I've ever done for those guys. I'm just going to tell you. But I'm also for our state candidates. And I get so tired of putting my money and time and effort and prayer and all that I do for them to get them elected and then have them go to Richmond or to D.C. and just turn their back on everything they promised us or just roll over and let the Democrats have their way. Mm -hmm. Folks, I'm looking for a fighter. I got involved with President Trump. Well, it feels good to say President Trump. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I feel so good. I got involved with President Trump when he wasn't even thought about being a president, when everybody said there was no way he could win. And I got involved with him not because he was maybe the most skilled politician or maybe he wasn't as conservative on some issues as some of the guys might have been. I got involved with Donald Trump because he's a fighter. That's why I did what I did. And I prayed during 2015 that God would send us a leader and a fighter. And all of this time, I thought it was I was praying for our president. But I have found something out over the last six or eight months. That prayer that I was praying for a leader to come to America, it was really for a governor for our fine state because we have some sorry politicians in Richmond. And what I have seen from Corey Stewart is this man is a fighter. I watched him fight the Republican establishment who did everything they could do to take down Donald Trump as a candidate. I watched him stand up against the elite in our party who, who did all they could possibly think of to derail his candidacy. It even cost him personally. It cost him politically. But he did the right thing anyway. And just today, I watched him go down to Charlottesville and stand in front of Robert E. Lee's statue and stand up to those idiot socialist history revisionists that want to take away our history. They're not smart enough to know that when you, when you destroy history, what are you bound to do? You're bound to, to repeat it. We're not going to repeat the bad things that happened in America, but by gosh, we're going to do the good things that America's been great at, and that's being the light to the world, and we're no longer that anymore, and I'm tired of it, and I want to put some more leaders, and I want to put some more fighters in place, and, and just D.C. isn't enough. The swamp in Richmond is a whole lot closer than the one in D.C. It stinks a lot worse to me down in southwest Virginia. It probably does to you, too. So, folks, we have got to get a real leader and a real fighter in Richmond. I'm tired. And just getting another Republican won't do it. We've had some Republicans in. They didn't do anything either. I'm looking for somebody who will stand up to whatever party, to whatever special interest group, to the lobbyist. Who in the world would want to put a lobbyist in office? Somebody tell me how that makes sense. We don't want that. I want somebody to stand up to the lobbyist. And that person is Corey Stewart. So I hope when we leave here today, you'll not only support him, but you'll get up and you'll go out and you'll go to work for Corey Stewart. You'll take over an area and you'll become a leader. You'll find people to work with you, and you'll get out and you'll collect signatures. We need petitions. We need you to go out and get all you can get. This area right here needs to turn out two or 3,000 signatures in the next two weeks, and it takes people working to do it. So I'm asking you not just to come here and say, wow, that was a good time, and the food was good, and boy, that Corey's a good speaker. I sure hope he makes it. That's not enough. Donald Trump won because people got out and worked for him. They showed up when, when other people wouldn't. When the other candidates, supporters stayed home, we showed up. And now it's time to show up for Corey Stewart and let's take back the governor's mansion and let's put a fighter in Richmond. Woo. Now, yeah. now you got a real treat. Got to meet this, this guy down there at uh, Robert E. Lee's statue, and that was pretty awesome out in Charlottesville. And if you haven't seen the Facebook Live video uh, of him and Corey, you need to go check it out. It's pretty awesome. There were a few protesters yelling a few nasty things, but it's all right because uh, in the end, we win, and that's what matters. Uh, but I, I want to introduce this next guy to you. He, uh, 
He's kind of a sensation online from what I'm understanding. He's been on Fox News, Fox and Friends, and Fox Business both. He's a stand-up comedian, a fellow vet. Yes, sir. <clears throat> a biker. <laughs> yes, sir. We got a lot of common, brother. Nice head as well, so uh, we do have a lot of common. He's also the founder of America First, and I'm told that he is really the man, Thaddeus Dion Alexander. tell you guys what, a lot of people look at me and they go, oh my God, it's a black guy who runs a Harley and he's a Republican. <laughs> but there's a lot to that, man. I mean, you get tired of being lied to. You know, a lot of black people, let me tell you, they would be here. But they're just like why a lot of white people are not here. They're afraid of being called a racist. And black people are afraid of being an Uncle Tom. But you can't be afraid anymore because being afraid, you're being bullied. That's right. That's right. They call us bullies because we're conservatives? No, they're the bullies. You know, Corey can go down to a statue and speak for just a couple of seconds without somebody chopping him in the face with a poster. Now those people were screaming, white supremacists, go home, white supremacists, go home. And the funny thing is, I didn't see no black people. <laughs> it, it was just the most amazing thing I've ever seen. But they don't understand this, is they're surrounding Corey and they're crowding him and they're getting all close and pushing him. I walk right through the crowd and they open up like Moses in the Red Sea. <laughs> Because they were afraid. They're worried about white supremacists like Corey. But they're the ones that are afraid of me. That don't make a lot of sense to me. So I am just tired of Democrats lying to me. You know, they love to keep this, this racial tension stirred up. Mm -hmm. To give you just enough to survive. Obama lied to us. Said he was the, the child of a single mother. He forgot about the $500,000 he inherited, which only 7% of white people in this country ever see. So he, I'm not gonna say he lied, he deceived us. He told us something, and, and, and a lot of whites, they lived on a dream, just like a lot of blacks. We wanted to believe that this is the Messiah. And if we believe in something hard enough, we forget that he's failing. You know, we just forget. And Corey's right, more people have to come out, more people have to clear this swamp. And the best way to do it, sometimes we have to start at the bottom. Because even though 98% of us live in check to check, we can put that little bit left over together and we can dis defeat some of these millionaires. Mm -hmm. And we can start right here in Virginia. And I like Corey, because he's just as arrogant as I am. <laughs> <laughs> I do, and I like the new guy. And somebody told me, man, why would you vote for Trump? He doesn't have a political science degree. He doesn't have an attorney degree. I'm like, well, obviously that's not required because everybody, 100 senators and 435 House of Representatives, they all have at least one of those and they can't do nothing. So it'll be all right. So it doesn't make a lot of sense for me to people to tell you what you need. All you have to do is believe. And when I say I'm an American first, I'm an American that happens to be black. Now, I'm proud to be black, but I'm more proud to be an American. Amen. And we cannot succeed unless we all get together. Forget about color. It's okay to say you're Irish. It's okay to say you're German. It's okay to do that, but you live here now. And you are American. And that's the bottom line. And we need somebody in office that puts America first. We can't have somebody that say, hey, that guy's going to do something for the black man. Or that guy's going to do something for the white man. You know what he needs to do something for? America. America. Right. The majority, 98%. That's who gets left behind every time. And I truly believe that my man, Corey Stewart, is going to work towards that right here in Virginia. Thank you guys very much. So you should be fired up. Are you ready to go get to work? That's the key. Are you ready to go get to work for this man right here who is the hardest fighting politician I have seen to date? And I am thrilled to be working with him. And I hope you will get involved and join us too. Corey Stewart, without question, the next governor of Virginia.
Winchester, how you doing? So, um, and I gotta say hello to Clark County and Frederick County and Warren County and what, thank you all for coming out today. Uh, this is our third stop today. We've got another one coming up, but uh, we've had a great day. It, it started literally with a bang. Uh, we went over, as Jack said, we, you know, well, first the first thing we did, we spoke to the GOP committee down in Charlottesville, and then we ended up going to the statue of Lee at Lee Park in Charlottesville, and I gotta tell you, I saw all these people out there. I'm like, holy smokes, look at all these people out there to support me. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> like, this is great, and I, I walked up, and pretty soon, like, you know, oh, go to hell, Tory Stewart signs, and all this other stuff, you know, we don't need your racism, blah, 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 all this other garbage. Anyway, that was a good moment though, because it showed a couple of things. The first thing it showed was that the left has lost its mind. Yeah. They completely lost their mind. You know why they've lost their mind? Because for the first time in eight years, we have a real president of the United States. Yeah. So on inauguration day, on inauguration day, there I was on top of the CNN building, with all the lunatics, the MSNBC, CNN, we were on top of the building and there was, and if you know this guy, just answer by answering with boo, and I think you probably do, he's the worst reporter ever, he works for CNN, and his name is Don Lemon. Lemon. Really bad guy. This guy. You know what I'm talking about, Dion. This, this guy is really bad, and he's really dumb too. Because as the presidential entourage is coming down, President Trump is coming down Pennsylvania Avenue, and we're looking down, and they're there right in front of us, and Don Levin, I'm not kidding, I'm not kidding, he says, and there's some booing in the crowd, and he says, oh look, they're booing Donald Trump. You look this up, he really said this. And there was one honest reporter for CNN, and no, no Don, they just introduced Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> this is true. This is true. They've really lost their mind. They really have lost their mind. But the other thing that it demonstrated was inside of that crowd, with all those left-wing lunatics, and by the way, they didn't want to talk. They weren't there to debate. They didn't want to listen to us. They didn't want to listen to anybody else. You know why? Because they know they're wrong. Deep down, they know they're wrong. They don't want to listen to anybody. They don't believe in the First Amendment of the Constitution. They don't believe in free speech. And they don't want to listen to it. And they learn that from their professors. There's a problem in our universities. Some of our best universities are being, we are indoctrinating. These, these professors are indoctrinating our children. And we've got to put an end to that. And we are going to work with the Trump administration to make some real reforms to education in this country moving forward. But what I saw in that crowd, and it was very dispiriting at first to see all those protesters out there. But when I got into that crowd, and somebody grabbed me by the arm, and it, and it was a woman, and, and she was an elderly woman, and she said, I'm with you. And I couldn't believe it. I'm like, what kind of courage did it take to cut through that nasty group of protesters and do that? And pretty soon there were more and more and more. And they were there. Because people in this country, and in this state in particular, this is the state where the spirit of Jefferson and Madison and Washington, and yes, Robert E. Lee, is still alive in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Yeah. I, want talk, I want to talk about Robert E. Lee for a moment. Because the left, it is demonized. Well, here's this Confederate War general commander of the Northern Virginia Army, and they're just trying to paint him as just a, a racist person, a terrible person. But you know something? He was an American war hero in the Mexican War in 1846-1848. And he reluctantly, reluctantly commanded Confederate troops in the Civil War because he loved Virginia. He was loyal to his he loved state of the Commonwealth of Virginia, just like Jefferson and others. And when the war was over, and this is what really makes the difference, he didn't, at the end of the war, lead a guerrilla movement. 
He didn't, at the end of the war, try to apologize for everything, or try to apologize for slavery, or anything like that. He didn't do any of those things. Robert E. Lee led a movement to reconcile the country, to heal the big wound that our nation had. And when he became president of Washington University, guess what? As they started admitting black students into the university, and white students attacked some of these students, some of, some of these African American students, Robert E. Lee had those white students expelled. This is a brave man. He wanted to heal the country. And it was because of his actions that the wound of the Civil War, the fissure in our country was healed generations before it otherwise would have healed. So Robert E. Lee deserves our respect. And those monuments that were placed there, in this case in 1924, all across the Commonwealth of Virginia need to stay where they are. I'm a fighter. I'm a fighter. I've never, I've lost a few battles, but I've never backed down to a political battle. Never. I never have, and I never will. And in 2007, I led what is considered to be the nation's toughest crackdown on illegal immigration anywhere in the country. And I got a lot of pressure. And I like to say it was just from Democrats and lefties, but it wasn't. And of course, it was from the press and the Democrats who were trying to get me to back down on this thing and protest. We had thousands of protesters. We had to be escorted into the building. But we didn't back down. We put that policy into place. And it was establishment Republicans who called me up and said, what are you thinking? You're up for re-election that year. I was, and I'm countywide elected in Prince County. 454,000 residents. 54% of them are minorities. And they said, well, you're never going to get re-elected. How are you going to do that? A big county like this, and I run countywide, 54% minority, you're never going to get re-elected. I said, you know, that's not the point. You're missing the whole point. This is the right thing to do. We need to enforce our laws. We had illegal immigrants not only coming into the country, what made it even worse is after our police officers, our brave men and women in blue, apprehended these thugs, brought them to the jail, and they were released because the federal government wouldn't do anything. So we decided to take action into our own hands. We put together a policy that says this. You're here illegally, you commit a crime, we arrest you, you serve your time, and then you're out. We deport you. <laughs> so since then, we've had 7,500 criminal illegal aliens apprehended by Prince William County Police and put in jail and handed over to the federal government for deportation. And our violent crime rate within three years dropped, now think about this, dropped by 48.7%. A 50% drop in our violent crime rate in Prince William County. The Washington Post, Washington Post called that a coincidence. We know it's not, we know it's not. And one of the things that I want to do in Virginia, one of the first things I'm going to do, because the first job of any elected official, whether it's the governor, whether it's the chairman of the Board of Supervisors, whether you're on the Board of Supervisors for another, or you're in the city council, or you're president of the United States, the first job is to protect the lives and the rights of the citizens you serve. Period. So, you know, Virginia, and I'm going to talk about this very briefly, I'm going to keep this short. We are losing 10,000 jobs a year, manufacturing jobs. 10,000 jobs a year, good jobs, high paying jobs. And you know where we're losing them to? It's not just abroad to China and elsewhere. We're losing those jobs to states around us like North Carolina. And don't blame North Carolina. They're doing the right thing. They lowered their marginal, top marginal income tax rate from 7.75% in 2010 to today at 5.49%. And guess where the jobs are going? They're going to North Carolina and they're going to states like Tennessee, which eliminated their income tax altogether. And what are we doing in, in Virginia? We're stuck. 
at 5.75%. It's been there for a long time, and the only thing we've done in Virginia over the last several years is to increase taxes with the biggest tax increase in history in 2013. If we want to reverse course and bring jobs back to the Commonwealth, we gotta wake up and we've gotta phase out the income tax on our citizens. Yeah. Because most of, our citizens, most of our citizens pay very high income tax. And most of our, 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 our citizens, even if they're small business owners, they're not paying, most of them are not incorporated, they're not paying the corporate income tax. They're paying their income tax at the personal income tax rate. The only way that we're going to bring back small businesses, which create 80% of the jobs in the Commonwealth and across the country, is to get off their backs, and that means reducing and eventually phasing out the income tax. Finally, I'm going to say this. If you want a winner, there's only one person in this race who's been able to do it. There's only one person in this race who's been able to deliver on his promises. Others talk. My number one opponent is out there talking. He talks about a big storm. He never talks about details because he has no intention of keeping any promise. Mm -hmm. So he's not even keeping, he's not even making even detailed promises. He's all talk. He's never delivered. Others talk, I deliver. I, I push through the deepest, largest tax cut in Prince William County history when we dropped average household tax bills by $400 in one year. We had to slash spending, but we did it. It was tough. As Blaine knows, it's, it's very, very difficult. It's very, very difficult to slash spending, but you've got to be able to do it. I'm the only one who's been able to deliver on illegal immigration. I'm the only one who's been able to take a county to number one in job growth in Virginia and number three in the United States. I'm the only one who's been able to do it, and I've done it in a big county in Northern Virginia where I've run for election and won four times. <laughs> if you want a fighter, if you want somebody who doesn't just talk the talk but who delivers, if you want somebody who's a winner and somebody who's going to be with you as we decrease taxes, if you want somebody who is going to be with you as we make the Commonwealth safe and deport illegal immigrants, if you want to make this state number one in job growth in the United States, and if you want to win in November, I'm your guy. And in 2016, yeah. And don't ever underestimate what you all did in 2016. We didn't win the Commonwealth for Mr. Trump, but we did do this. We knew as soon as Kim came was selected as a running mate, we had an uphill battle. All we had to do was try to keep him pinned down. And we were outspent by the Clinton campaign by 20 to 1. They spent a lot of resources here. Time by the campaign and by the major surrogates for the campaign was here in Virginia. And that, those were resources that couldn't go to other states like Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin. So we had a big role in making sure that we had a president who was going to represent us all. And we, you have a big role in taking back the country in 2016. But in 2017, this year, we're all going to get together because in 2017, we're going to take Virginia back. Thanks a lot.